Our legacy is such a thick web. I acknowledge you, my tribal chief, because it's my family. There have been many great wrestling families throughout the history of pro wrestling. The Hearts, the Von Erichs, the Colognes, Guerreros, Rhodes, Wyndham's, and many more. But a family that is regarded as possibly the greatest and widest reaching, especially in the history of WWE, is the Anawahi family. In the WWE, there is possibly no family that has accomplished more than they have. Through the bloodline, you may know that it runs deeper than you can imagine. It all starts with two patriarchs of the family, Reverend Anawahi and High Chief Peter Maivia. The two, while not related biologically, created a blood pact, making them blood brothers. Since then, Maivia's side of the family has been considered an extension of the Anawahi bloodline. So how deep does this bloodline really run? And who are some of the members that you may not have known are related to this long lineage of famous wrestlers that includes the likes of Roman Reigns, the Usos, Rikishi, The Rock, and others? Our story is going to start with the two sons of Reverend Anawahi, Afa and Sika. After training under Peter Maivia and his future son-in-law, Rocky Johnson, Afa and Sika began teaming as the Wild Samoans in the early 70s getting early experience under the Hart family patriarch Stu Hart's Stampede Wrestling in Western Canada. With experience across North America, they made their way to Japan, where they became the IWA Tag Team Champions. In 1979, they took their services to a company we now know as WWE, the number one wrestling company in the world, starting a 44-year-long relationship with their family and this company. This was shortly before Vincent Kennedy McMahon took over the company from his father, Vincent McMahon Sr. The Wild Samoans, with their manager, Captain Lou Albano, had years-long stints in WWE and captured the WWE World Tag Team titles on numerous occasions. In 1983, it was a little bit of a weird run for the Wild Samoans as they had an eight-month reign that saw Sika getting injured with Afa's son, Samu, taking his place as one half of the Tag Team Champions without their relationship even being acknowledged on TV. But overall, their career saw them win 20 tag team titles that we know of. It laid the foundation for what many consider one of the greatest wrestling dynasties of all time. Now that we've clued you into Off and Sika's WWE career, it's time to map out the huge and rather complicated Anawahi family tree. Afa and Sika were not the only sons of Reverend Anawahi that got into the wrestling business. They were two of many children, with their others being Tamua, Junior, Afoa, Alavera, and Sipa. Afa's children Manu, the previously mentioned Samu, and Lloyd, who you may know better as L.A. Smooth, his only daughter Monica Anawahi married the late wrestler Gary Albright, making him an extended member of the family. Manu, or Afa after a brief stint at WWE's Deep South Wrestling, he made his main roster debut and quickly aligned himself with Randy Orton and Cody Rhodes in the initial version of what we knew as Legacy. Samu had an interesting career. We mentioned that he subbed for his uncle in the 80s, Sika, and he took his own path, though, wrestling in Montreal, where he paired with his cousin, Salofa Fatu Jr., who you may know also as Rikishi. They formed the Samoan SWAT team and competed for Carlos Colon's WWC in Puerto Rico before also wrestling for the Von Erichs in World Class Championship Wrestling. Their big break came in WCW when they signed in 1989 and were paired with Paul E. Dangerously. You may know him now as the wise man Paul Heyman. Although his time with them was brief, it remains an important bond that obviously became much more fruitful for them in the future. Samu and the future Rikishi, then known as Fatu, left WCW after wrestling as the new Wild Samoans and then spent time on the independent circuit before joining WWE in 1992. Going by the name The Head Shrinkers and having Afa at ringside as their manager, they had a solid run as WWE Tag Team Champions, but it came to an abrupt end in a match that wasn't even televised. While Samu left WWE, he returned soon after in 1995 to form the Samoan Gangster Party, 
with Matt Onawahi, aka Rosie, not even wrestling once during that time. Samu has a son named Lance Onawahi who wrestles for Major League Wrestling. As for Lloyd, he spent a significantly lesser time in WWE and is known more by his name LA Smooth during his 1996-1997 ECW stint. Once Rikishi stayed in WWE in the early 2000s without Samu, he took his place on the indies as one half of the Head Shrinkers. Back to the family tree, Afa and Sika's sibling, Tamua, was the parent of Reno Anawahi, aka Black Pearl, while the other sibling, Junior, was the father of the late great Yokozuna. Yokozuna, inarguably one of the best big men in the history of professional wrestling, needs no introduction, but WWE quickly avoided presenting him as a member of that Samoan dynasty, with Vince McMahon personally convincing him to sign with the promotion. After getting the gimmick of a sumo champion and being paired with the nefarious Mr. Fuji, he was pushed like an invading monster force from Japan. Debuting on October 31st, 1992, and winning the Royal Rumble just a few months later, he stormed into the main event of WrestleMania. He headlined the biggest event of the year, beating then-champion Bret Hart, before Hulk Hogan came out and took the moment away from him. Yeah, it was one of the more appalling finishes of a WrestleMania. Still, Yoko enjoyed another reign as WWE Champion a few months later after gaining the title from Hulk Hogan and headlined a WrestleMania again the next year in Madison Square Garden with Bret Hart getting his revenge. Yokozuna became the first member of his family to become WWE World Champion. And though his run at the top of WWE was not long, it is certainly one that is remembered fondly earning him a place in the WWE Hall of Fame. He sadly passed away in 2000, two years after exiting WWE. Rikishi and Sam Fatu are twin brothers, with the latter of the pair coming up in the 80s and 90s in WWE and WCW. His brief time in WWE saw him get the name change of The Tonga Kid, and he was dubbed the cousin of Jimmy Superfly Snuka, feuding with Roddy Piper for a brief time. We didn't mention it earlier, but he was a part of the Samoan SWAT team and New Wild Samoans for a little while in WC Dub. His son, Jacob Fatu, is the longest reigning MLW world champion, having held the title for over 800 days. Looks like long title reigns are something that runs in the family. We've touched upon Rikishi's alliance with Samu Fatu, but what is undoubtedly most remembered is his run as Rikishi, yeah. I did it for The Rock was an angle that some people maybe don't want to remember, but it was still just WWE trying to push him into becoming a main event star, and he did flirt with the main event scene for a little while in late 2000 before becoming once again a fun-loving mid-carter. Overall, he had one of the more successful careers in the Anawahi family winning the tag team titles in WWE three different times, as well as the Intercontinental Championship before getting inducted into the WWE Hall of Fame in 2015. His children include the Usos and Solo Sokoa. Since Naomi is married to Jimmy Uso, she's a part of that family by extension as well. Rikishi's younger brother, Edward, is a man you may know as the late great Umaga. While he had a two-year run in WWE between 2001 and 2003 along with Rosie as part of 3-Minute Warning under the name Jamal, he was released in 2003 after a bar fight, going on to have stints with TNA and a highly successful run with All Japan Pro Wrestling. In All Japan, he defeated some of the biggest names in Japanese wrestling, such as Kojima, Keiji Muto, and Kawada. His run was impressive enough to get a call back to WWE, beginning a dominating tenure as Umaga, constantly being the man who would crush babyfaces, winning the IC title, falling short of a world title run multiple times, while also representing Vince McMahon in the highly money-making Battle of the Billionaires match at WrestleMania 23. Sadly, Umaga was released from WWE, reportedly for issues related to the wellness policy, before tragically passing away in 2009. Umaga's wrestling legacy continues through his children, with his son Zilla Fatu now training under Booker T's Reality of Wrestling School. Although he's had some reported legal issues, he seems to be on the right track with no better a mentor than a man who faced similar troubles in his life in Booker T. 
Let's go up a couple levels in the family of the Anawahi tree to another branch. We aren't going to forget Sika, who is the father of Rosie and Roman Reigns. Rosie was trained by Afa and spent six years wrestling for different promotions, having teamed up with Umaga for a large part of it. They were signed together by WWE in 2001, initially going by the name The Island Boys, before becoming the hit squad for Eric Bischoff, known as Three Minute Warning. After Umaga, then Jamal, was released by WWE, Rosie teamed up with Hurricane, and they were called Superheroes in Training, with the abbreviations really being S-H-I-T, a total coincidence. No doubt, they, they didn't mean for that to happen. With Umaga now being rehired, they were teased as a three-minute warning reunion, only for it not to play out because Rosie was released. It was unfortunate timing, and he never really competed for WWE again. He ran a promotion known as Epic Championship, along with his father Sika, before tragically passing away in 2017. The next wave of Anawahis to come up in the WWE ranks would include the Usos, followed by Roman Reigns. While the Usos, Jimmy and Jay, had a lot of success in their first six years of their WWE career, their real golden age began in 2016 when they moved to SmackDown and turned heel, going on to become what many consider one of the greatest WWE tag teams of all time. The Dudleys are certainly up there in the conversation, but even Bully Ray himself has had to admit that the Usos have surpassed him and Devon and even the New Day. It is my opinion that the Usos are the greatest tag team in the history of WWE, and here is why. The Usos have won multiple World Tag Team Championships, all of the Dudleys in the New Day. However, the Usos are doing something that the Dudleys in the New Day never did. They are involved in a storyline that is continuing to put asses in seats. As for Roman Reigns, there isn't too much we can't say that you don't already know. He has made his way into becoming one of the most accomplished individual performers in the storied history of the Anawahi family. Since coming up from WWE NXT with The Shield, Reigns has been one of the top draws in WWE, winning multiple world titles, closing out WrestleManias, and in the last few years, giving us the Tribal Chief, a villain persona that has been so unrelentingly over. Oh yeah, he's also one of the longest reigning world champions in the modern history of all pro wrestling. Many of us wouldn't be thinking about the Anawahis in the same light if we weren't thinking about the last three year long run that the Bloodline gave us, one that many consider to be the greatest of its generation, if not the greatest of all time. We could go on about this special family and what they've given to the genre of pro wrestling but that would probably take a whole other day. We could get into Tamina being associated with them as well. That's because her father, Jimmy Superfly Snuka, married into the family through his second wife, Sharon. And then there's Sean Maluda, who is the nephew of Afa and is trained by him. You may remember him from his brief appearance at the Cruiserweight Classic and then NXT. Now that we've got that ironed out, let's move on to another side of the tree. Yes, Peter Maivia, a WWE Hall of Famer who was truly one of the greatest Polynesian pro wrestlers of all time, also crossed over into the mainstream as Peter Maivia fought Sean Connery's James Bond in the 1967 film You Only Live Twice, taking the L after getting smashed in the head with an illegal object. Come on, come on, that's illegal, James Bond. That is shaken, not stirred, sir. Looks like The Rock had some inspiration to jump it into movies, though. The High Chief married Ophelia Fuataga, later known as Leah Nayavia. Although we haven't touched upon the wives of the Samoan dynasty, Leah was a significant figure, being a wrestling promoter despite not knowing at one point it was scripted entertainment. She was a promoter in the Hawaii region, drawing up 20,000 people for some events at the peak of its powers. With her, Maya Villa had two children, Toa and Ata. Rocky Johnson, who helped train Afa and Sika, married into the family through Ata, with the high chief Peter Maivia not agreeing with the two getting married at first. But eventually, they went through with it and gave birth to this person uh, known to mortals as uh, uh, Dwayne Johnson, but known to all of us as The Rock who is by far the most famous global megastar in all of entertainment, not just pro wrestling. The Rock soared to success in WWE. After attempting to break into pro football, he opted to go into the family business, and thankfully he did, because he became one of the biggest names ever in all of wrestling, up there with Hogan, 
Austin, Ric Flair is the rock. In the Attitude Era, he was one of the top guys, bringing in massive crowds and TV ratings before leaving wrestling altogether to become one of the biggest movie stars of all time too. Yeah, but you probably already know that unless you've been living underneath a rock. No pun intended. Continuing his wrestling legacy is his daughter, Simone, who now goes by the name Ava Rain in NXT as part of the Schism faction. Rain is the first ever fourth generation wrestler in WWE history and is also one of the youngest to ever sign a contract with the company. She's probably going to have to face a lot of the same flack that Charlotte Flair got, but so far things seem to be going well for her in WWE NXT, with WWE taking their time and not rushing her to the main roster. Last but not least, Peter Maivia's first cousin, Joseph Fanene, the father of Nia Jax, making her The Rock's second cousin. She was not like most girls, debuting with WWE NXT in 2014 before going up to Monday Night Raw in 2016. She would win the Raw Women's Championship as well as the WWE Women's Tag Team titles. The enduring success of the Samoan wrestling dynasty is profound. Even from its roots with Reverend Anawahi and Peter Maivia, if they weren't related, they were bonded by blood as blood brothers and their long-standing blood pact has made two families come together as one uniting force and a single love for the art, the business, and the passion of pro wrestling. What's crazy to think is that the likes of Zillafatu, Solo Sokoa, and Ava Rain can make a big impact in the future, and we may still have another generation of Samoan glory in WWE and beyond to look forward to. Do you think the Samoan wrestling dynasty is the greatest family lineage in pro wrestling? Let us know in the comments below and check out more great videos like this from Sports Keto Wrestling.